Thank you very much, Professor, uh, for the nice introduction. Uh, my name is Defne Gönenç. I'm working in the Yashar University uh, in the Center for Mediterranean Studies. This is a study that uh, we um, actually uh, prepared together with uh, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan Chaturvedi uh, from India. Uh, he's also here. Uh, welcome, Rajiv. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell him. <laughs> Uh, he is based in Nalanda University in New Delhi, uh, in India. Uh, Rajiv, please feel free to, you know, um, join uh, any time uh, if you would like to, you know, comment or say something, particularly at the end of the presentation. So, um, uh, our research question is, uh, what is the foreign policy of India towards the Eastern Mediterranean region? We wanted to, uh, you know, actually look at uh, how uh, foreign policy of India is formulated towards the Eastern Mediterranean region because uh, this uh, topic is particularly uh, under considered in the literature right now. There are a few other uh, powers whose uh, interest in the Mediterranean region have been tackled, for instance, the European Union or United States, this is uh, tackled a lot. And recently, Chinese interest in the region, uh, interference in the region is also investments are also also uh, considered, but India's foreign policy is uh, quite under-researched, so uh, our uh, particular aim is to fill this gap. And uh, we divided this topic into two sub-questions. Uh, we looked at the key drivers shaping India's foreign policy towards the region. For instance, we asked, uh, depending on what exactly India formulates its foreign policy for this region, and then we actually uh, wanted to, you know, uh, look in depth. We wanted to look in depth uh, India's uh, relations with particular countries in the region. So we asked how has the trajectory of Indian relations been with its key partners in the region. And then uh, we have chosen particular countries and answered uh, this question as well. Well, in the literature, as I said before, um, uh, there are not quite many, uh, you know, sources that one can look at. Uh, there are a few reports, you know, uh, you can see it here, uh, Access the Ocean. Uh, this one looks at, <coughs> um, you know, historical uh, Indian Mediterranean trade. Uh, there are, you know, current reports uh, produced about um, uh, the topic, uh, India overcoming the distant dilemma. This is also produced by an NGO. And uh, this is uh, also a report. And there are uh, books uh, rather than articles, and most of them rather look at uh, the Middle East, you know. It does not formulate um, the topic as Indian foreign policy in the Eastern Mediterranean, but they, uh, what they do is they either look at Indian foreign policy in the Middle East or Indian foreign policy with uh, Europe or like uh, Southern Europe. So uh, East uh, Mediterranean or Mediterranean is not really formulated as a region uh, in India's foreign policy understanding. Uh, so what type of a methodology did we follow? Um, so we first identified key drivers of Indian foreign policy towards the region uh, through uh, inductive reasoning. And then uh, we actually form, uh, reformulated our uh, uh, drivers uh, by uh, looking at uh, the literature, uh, also uh, through some interviews uh, with the foreign service officers in the region. And then we selected, as I said before, two key partners, and they are Greece and Egypt. Uh, and then we studied uh, their particular history uh, with uh, India, actually. So, uh, so we held uh, one interview uh, with uh, some uh, one foreign service officer uh, from India, who is right now working in the East Mediterranean. Um, we also had like a content analysis of uh, embassy web pages and Ministry of External Affairs' annual reports. We also conducted news analysis. So we, for instance, search for words and word groups like Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean. Greece and Egypt in Indian newspapers, such as the Hindu, Indian Express and Tribune. And then uh, from there onwards, uh, we have chosen the most relevant ones and included in our um, article. So um, 
what are the key drivers of Indian foreign policy in the Eastern Mediterranean? So our argument is that uh, there has been a uh, certain change in the foreign policy of India after the Cold War, because before the Cold War, uh, Indian, Indian's foreign policy was uh, based on a non-alignment policy uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. And uh, still, uh, they were uh, like sort of friendly with uh, Soviet Union. Uh, but after the Cold War, um, this uh, changed uh, given the you know uh, new realities in the world order and this uh, pushed um, india uh, towards the uh, united states uh, but this also created uh, some new room for uh, india to you know uh, formulate uh, some new policies for instance india started to establish some relations with israel uh, because before the end of the cold war this was non-existent uh, and uh, the second one is uh, growing Chinese influence in the region. Uh, you, I mean, given that China, and there is a particular uh, emphasis on a Chinese and Indian uh, competition, um, and uh, given that they, uh, these countries are like big economies, and um, uh, they, provide, uh, to, they both provide the global market uh, through cheap labor, um, and this is uh, particularly uh, true for you know uh, African and Eastern uh, Mediterranean actually markets. So uh, India is at, we wouldn't call them like particular like uh, like uh, specific competitors in the region. However, uh, it's also true that uh, India pays attention in formulating its policy uh, what China does in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, for instance. Uh, China is currently establishing good relations with Egypt through solar, uh, you know, uh, solar energy uh, projects uh, in the Egypt. And uh, uh, it's apparent that uh, India is also, uh, you know, sort of uh, following or like, uh, yes, uh, watching what's uh, actually uh, happening right now um, in terms of Chinese foreign policy. Uh, thirdly, socio-economic and historical relevance of a particular country in question for India is quite relevant uh, when uh, India formulates in, um, its policies because uh, India generally does not take into account one country's relations with other countries uh, when uh, India formulates its policy and relations with a country. Uh, what it does, uh, it, because it's a non-interventionist country, uh, it formulates this uh, policy uh, both on an issue-based uh, manner and also a country-based uh, manner. So uh, it's not very, uh, it's not a big problem for them. Uh, what it, what that country, uh, you know, conducts, uh, how it conducts its relations with other countries. So it's uh, in that countries, that uh, particular countries' relations and history. Uh, with India is the thing that is most uh, important and relevant for them. India-Israel relations are also improving. Uh, there is a particular emphasis on this relation, uh, especially after Modi government, but still uh, these relations were established uh, following the end of the Cold War. And um, uh, for instance, uh, in pharmaceuticals uh, and also uh, energy-relevant pro products, uh, the um, trade is currently improving. Uh, before uh, the end of the Cold War, this was non-existent. Uh, and um, uh, as you know, I already said that uh, India is a non-interventionist country and what is important for them is the uh, historical relevance of that particular country is important for India when they formulate their foreign policy. However, still, they uh, sort of uh, watch, uh, you know, uh, corresponding countries' relations with Pakistan. For instance, uh, like how uh, Pakistan uh, is perceived by that country uh, is uh, followed by India, but um, that does not mean that India takes uh, uh, it as a, trade, a threat if uh, a country has good relations with Pakistan, it does not. But still, uh, it keeps an eye on it. Uh, I would formulate it that way. Um, also, of course, changes in domestic politics and political economy of India impacts its foreign policy formulation in the Eastern Mediterranean. For instance, after Modi's election, 
uh, there were there was a certain changes uh, in the uh, you know foreign policy uh, of its foreign policy in the Eastern Mediterranean. Like there is more emphasis on India-Israel relations now, and uh, given uh, Modi's emphasis in Hindutva, uh, they are more closely watching Chinese influence in the region. However, uh, still the basic parameters of India's foreign policy in the Eastern Mediterranean were already established when Modi was elected. But still, um, that there are uh, a few changes that can be identified. And also India's energy dependence on the Gulf region is quite important. Uh, India is uh, importing its, uh, most of its energy needs uh, from the Gulf region. And they were uh, particularly hesitant to respond to, for instance, Arab uh, Spring because of this, because India was a little bit, um, uh, how to say, uh, a bit, uh, you know, uh, cautious uh, if uh, that, you know, um, revolt, unrest uh, was to spill over to Gulf region because then it would impact its own uh, energy need because uh, India is a quite large country with uh, huge energy needs and uh, this is, uh, these needs are answered uh, through imports uh, from the Gulf region right now. And let's jump to Indian-Egyptian relations. So uh, e Egypt is, a, uh, is the key partner of India in the Eastern Mediterranean and uh, India formulates most of its foreign policy around Egypt uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean and also in the Middle East uh, and, if, and also in Africa. Uh, both India and Egypt led uh, the non-alignment uh, policy. Uh, they were the leaders of this policy um, during the Cold War together with Tito from Yugoslavia. Uh, so, um, it's also a key partner in the entire African continent. Uh, and this is uh, particularly why um, they sort of, you know, uh, kept their indifference towards the Arab Spring. They uh, first wanted to watch uh, and see what is going to happen uh, in, you know, uh, Egypt. And uh, they uh, placed a certain distance both from the regime and from the protesters in the Arab Spring, especially in the early days. And then they, until uh, that, well, they, uh, they waited until a regional response was formulated, a, a regional and then an international response. And only after that, um, they shared uh, their opinion, uh, you know, about the uh, Arab uh, Spring actually. But what they did is uh, they actually um, uh, considered uh, the security of their own citizens uh, living in Egypt uh, important. And they uh, took them back uh, to India. Uh, so, as I said, uh, this, were, this is uh, why they were neutral, sort of, uh, throughout the uh, revolts, Arab revolts. And um, although at the end they were sympathetic towards the demands of the people, uh, they did not side it with them uh, during the revolts uh, until an international uh, answer was given. And once uh, Morsi government uh, took office, uh, despite their Islamic inclination, despite their openly uh, Islamic inclination, India engaged with them. Uh, so they carried out uh, official visits uh, and they continued their official relations. Uh, however, uh, under Sisi government, the bilateral momentum increased. Now, uh, you know, uh, there are a few more activities uh, and engagements uh, between these countries. And um, uh, like, uh, despite Modi government's focus on the neighborhood, like uh, improved relations with Israel, Egypt still remains the key and central partner for India. Uh, and uh, most of the Indian imports from Egypt also remains uh, energy related. If we look at Indian-Greek relations, we see that their relations go back to antiquity, antiquity sorry. Uh, interesting enough, um, these are actually very nice, uh, some historical, uh, you know, information. Uh, it's believed that India first, uh, first and ever established its diplomatic relations with Greece in the world. Uh, so this is, I, I think, a very interesting information. And uh, during Roman times, India uh, in Roman Empire uh, was seen as a very uh, great source of uh, wealth. Uh, and uh, only the rich people were able to, for instance, uh, use spice, uh, you know, in their food. And uh, use of, for instance, pepper was seen as a very important moral decline. So, you know, uh, they were uh, blamed uh, as, you know, 
uh, morally unhealthy or morally low people uh, when they actually when the rich people used uh, spice in their food because uh, the price of um, spice was very expensive it was too high uh, so if we turn our look uh, to you know a modern india today we see that after India's independence in 1947, diplomatic ties were established in uh, three years' time, in 1950. And currently, these countries, Greece and uh, India, share uh, many common approaches in their international uh, policies. Uh, for instance, they both want uh, United Nations reform. Uh, they, are, they are rather uh, searching for uh, solutions through multilateralism, for instance, uh, Law of the Sea uh, Convention uh, is a, a good example. They are both partners and they, uh, for instance, look for a solution under this convention and they promote this. And also they share their um, approach towards the Cyprus issue as well. Uh, Greece supports, uh, pardon, uh, India supports Greek uh, stance um, uh, around this uh, problem. However, commercial and economic exchanges between these countries are not uh, very significant. Although uh, India currently regards Greece as a, a sort of getaway to Europe, you know, uh, especially if you consider its location from the Nile, uh, you know, and the uh, Suez Canal onwards, you know, uh, it's a particular getaway to Europe. Still, uh, commercial and economic exchanges between these countries are not uh, very significant right now. Um, but uh, there are efforts to improve it. Strategically, um, uh, politically, uh, there is a shared uh, sort of threat perception from uh, Turkey-Pakistan, increasing Turkey-Pakistan relations, and uh, Turkish government support to Pakistan about Kashmir issues. Um, and this uh, pushed Greece and India closer. Also, very recently, uh, Greece uh, joined International Solar Alliance, uh, whose establishment was led by uh, both India and France. Uh, so, if we conclude, uh, I'm happy because I will have some time uh, to give uh, my co author Rajiv as well, if he wants to add something at the end. But before that, let me conclude briefly. Uh, so India uh, pursued an anti-imperialist and decolonizational uh, foreign policy with the Mediterranean region uh, based on a non-alignment policy before the Cold War. Uh, and at the end of the Cold War, uh, most uh, scholars believe that there was rather a pragmatic or like more economy-based, uh, issue-based turn uh, in uh, India's relations with the region uh, so uh, for instance uh, with uh, value formulating its relations with israel rather than uh, normative understandings uh, india started to follow its pragmatic uh, and economy based um, you know thinking uh, during the arab spring they were rather indifferent uh, towards the you know um, revolt uh, so they uh, really followed the cautious foreign policy uh, for instance, in Syria, they distanced themselves both from Syrian government and opposition. This is also true uh, in Egyptian case to a certain extent. They announced uh, a response only after in Egyptian case uh, when an international response was formulated. Uh, however, uh, ascendance of Islam, political Islam, uh, this certainly goes against Indian secularism. Uh, despite the fact that India uh, is home to a large uh, uh, Muslim um, majority. Um, since India is a secular country, um, it also formulates its foreign policy based on these principles. Um, uh, India currently does not have a lot of uh, like very significant trade relations uh, with the uh, you know, countries in the region. Uh, apart from some key partner, partners, for instance, Egypt, Israel, and Greece, they have the countries with, uh, you know, most uh, trade relations with India. But apart from that, India's trade uh, with the region, for instance, Lebanon, Turkey, Cyprus, they are not very really significant. Even with Greece, actually, it's not uh, too high, but still uh, a little bit more than compared to other countries in terms of percentages. And uh, in general, in conclusion, uh, we can say that uh, India formulates a caution foreign policy 
there is non-intervention uh, principle uh, and issue-based alignment um, and principles of middle path and consensus-seeking principles towards the region. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And now I would like to, uh, I think we have uh, a few more minutes. Uh, if Rajiv would like to add something, uh, can I uh, uh, distinguished, uh, you know, um, Chair, can I give the floor to my co-author? Uh, 